Hi. Yes, Alice. No worries. Uh, sorry, I'm three minutes late, but I'm here now and present to run this tour about the Afro-Brazilian Museum of History and Culture in Rio de Janeiro. I put the camera here a little so I can start with this beautiful background of the maps of Africa and Brazil on my back. I don't know what's going on here. Look at this balance. My gimbal is a little crazy. I don't know if it's the connection with the microphone here. I'll try to manage, let's see. Hi, who is there present? Hi, Sheila, Raquel, Paulo Henrique. Thanks for joining. Are you Brazilian, Paulo Henrique, or Portuguese? Hello, Noreen from Lancaster. Satian, hi. Hi, Claire. Ah, cool. Brazil, okay. There's something going on crazy with my gimbal here today. I don't know if it's an actual bug or problem with that. It's everything's charged. I calibrated. Sorry. I have to... Maybe I still need to learn more, you know. I use, I use, but then suddenly sometimes it just twists. And I'm trying to figure out, okay? I hope it doesn't compromise today's tour. Otherwise, I'll need to remove the gimbal and run without the gimbal. And I've done tests before. Hi, Iris. Hi, Sam. Okay, we are here at the Museum, Afro-Brazilian Museum of History and Culture. My name is Kelly Tavares. Some of you already know me. And I'm a tour guide in Rio. And also... I run virtual tours as well. And everything was looking cool, but then, sorry. I will introduce here this room of the museum with a beautiful music of the sea. And there is an art on the top with different African flags as well. And it's installed on the rooftop. It is, it's very relaxing here. I was here concentrating for the tour, getting things ready. Hi Sam, hi AK, hi Mark, thanks for joining. And the artists here did this, the creator and the arts, uh, designers they did this installation of african fabrics so they keep swirling with the wind uh-huh indeed noreen thank you all for being present this is the brazilian afro museum of history and culture in rio de janeiro and i introduce you this beautiful map showing some of the people from Africa who were brought to South America in Brazil. 40% of the population brought to Brazil from West, came mostly from West African people and also from Mozambique in the East Coast of Africa. 40% of these people were brought during slavery time to Rio de Janeiro while the others were spread throughout the Americas to work in the plantation farms of the West Indies, U.S., and Canada. But here we are focusing on our Brazilian history. Hi, Sabrina. Hi, Mark. Thanks for joining. And I will get closer so you can see some of the people who constituted the people of uh, brought, being brought here. Well, my gimbal, I don't know if it really has a problem, an actual problem. So I, I would remove this uh, from the gimbal itself. Sorry about it. Don't know what that, what's going on.
If you get dizzy, just close your eyes and removing the phone from here. Okay. All right, then. There you go. Technical issues of virtual life. And let's go. Let's come back to the map of Africa. The African continent, which is now divided into different countries, was divided into different regions with different people constituting it. As you see, this intricate net of peoples of Africa were here designed and drawn based on the people who were present here and are present here, which were many of them our ancestors being brought and taken to Brazil. Some examples here that you see, people who were brought from Cabo Verde to the root of Guinea, Many of them were brought to the north and northeast of Brazil, which today are the states of Belém, São Luís, Fortaleza, Recife, arriving in the northeast of Brazil and being spread to the north, center, west center, where they used to work in the rubber trees, in the Amazon or deforestation of many parts of the Amazon to found the different cities located here in the center and the west of Brazil. Also here in the center of Brazil, many plantation farms and mines as well. Now there are different routes that were called, the routes based on the regions they were brought from West Africa, such as here, the route of Guinea, where you would find people, the people from, for example, I would say some of them are the Malinke, thank you, Rain, the Iayunka, Balante, Fulani, Suso, Teme, Cornco, Inunca, Mende, Pele, Cru, the Creole. So the other route was the Mina route. And the Mina route being brought from this part of the west of Africa, where you, today you have the cities of Accra, Lagos, Calabar, Porto Principe, El Mina. And which people were there? The people were many people. So this is important to notice that what today is divided into different countries, there were actually, and there are the sense of different people, such as the Ashanti, Ani, Fate, Fante, Iwe, Fon, Trib, Tem, Eba, Yoruba, Nupe, Bari, Idoma, Edo, Ibo, Ikoi, Ija, Ibiobio, Kosikoko. So when I show this, it's important also to pronounce these names so I can, it helps us to bring back so, to some of our ancestry. Because many of the people who were also taken to the West Indies and the US, many of them were taken from this region of the West Africa as well. So uh, the Yoruba people are the people who really influenced really strongly our culture in Brazil. Also the Igbo people, the Igbo, there is a strong culture. And the Ashanti, many of them brought to the North America also influenced it a lot. Now, the other route that we call is a very strong route in Brazilian roots, is the route of Angola region, which today is also, well, let's go back to the MENA route, where today is Togo, Benin, Senegal, Ghana, now, when we come down here in the West African map, you would see the cities of, capital cities of Luango, Molembo, Cabinda, Luanda, Benguela, Luanda being the, the city, capital city of Angola. And this is the Cabinda Bay, the root of Angola, 
with today you find the people and the descendants of people of the Kimbundu, the Povo Congo, Congo people, Lulua, Mbala, Yakalua, Pende, Povos Lunda, Luvale, Songo, Ovimbundu, Ngonielu, Kumbi. And sorry, my brothers and sisters, if sometimes I will I mispronounce some of these names, it's because for many of us from Brazil, despite that we carry a lot of the African roots in our bloods, in our way of being, we missed a lot of recognizing these roots uh, in a way that is uh, beyond a spiritual way and the instinctual way and the way that we are as culture because we didn't receive in school formal education to recognize and acknowledge our ancestry. So that's why it's so important for many of us who work with the Afro-Brazilian uh, routes here, such as me, a focus on Black History Walks in Rio, uh, is to recognize and understand research so I can recognize my own identity within the identities of people who were scattered throughout the Americas. Now, many people came from the route of Mozambique, from the West, being brought of the East Coast of Africa, such as places of Zanzibar and Mozambique, all the way coming down south of Africa to the route making this long crossing through the Atlantic Ocean to and being brought from the routes of Angola, most of them, and the routes of Mozambique, to the northeast of Brazil, Salvador, where guide Sayuri Koshima runs tours in Salvador, and to the southeast, where Rio de Janeiro, São Paulo, Minas Gerais, and Espírito Santo are located. Arriving and being brought in Rio, some were also carried to the south of, of Brazil, and arriving in the southeast, where after the 1700s was the capital of Brazil, they were spread throughout the interior of the country to work in the plantation farms of the states, first with the sugarcane in, uh, mills, and later with the coffee plantation farms, which were being spread throughout Rio, Spir uh, Minas Gerais, São Paulo, and Espírito Santo as well. So work in all this region and arriving also in Minas Gerais in the 1700s to work in the gold mines. So 40% of the population of Africa was brought during this late trade to Brazil, which means that the largest population of Brazil was in the 1800s black and still is constituting 60% of the population. So I could also share here some of the countries from where people were taken to Brazil, Angola, today is Congo, Republica Democratica do Congo, Gabon. And uh, also from here, this region, the Ghana region, the Guinea route, or the route from Mina, Mina port, Benin, Togo, Ghana, Liberia. And here, to the Guinea route, Senegal, Mauritania, Sahara Occidental. So you have an overview of some of the routes that were brought here and the flow being represented here. What makes sense when we run the, the tours here in the Little Africa region where the largest slave port was created uh, in the... 1700s and 1800s on, and there is a tour that I run, the Little Africa tour, saying about this. So the largest flow being brought here to Brazil, West Indies, and another part to the north. This is representing. And we are running a tour at the Mucab Museum of History and Culture, of Afro-Brazilian History and Culture. Thank you, Paula. Thanks, Francis. Thanks, Inga and Jorge Alejandro for joining the Afro-Brazilian Museum Tour of History and Culture 
please feel free to take your postcard in case you want to remember this beautiful map honoring our ancestral people brought from Africa. The Afro-Brazilian Museum of History and Culture is located in a beautiful 1800s building being built by Emperor Dom Pedro II to be one of the first public schools of Brazil. This was built in 1871 and later I can show you the, the building from outside and of course I can answer you questions according to your interests so we can run a tour that you, it will keep you engaged and really uh, uh, sparkling your curiosity to understand more of our Brazilian culture. Now I want to share this work of a Hona artist. Hona, R-O-N-A. Hona is an artist who I know in person and he is a multi-talented artist. He writes plays, he does paintings, he does installations and creates objects such as these. Thank you, Alice, for your support. Thank you so much. Now, look how beautiful these beads. Now, I want to thank you, Sheila, for your support. I want you to pay attention to these beautiful beads and objects here. Can you tell what kind of object is it? Would you guess? They look like smaller stones, but they are actually seeds. And these beautiful seeds, they, uh, they grow in a bush, in bushes of a plant called Our Lady's Teardrops. Look at the name of the plant that originates these natural beads. So they look as stones, but they are actually perfect nature-made beads out of seeds of Lágrimas de Nossa Senhora. And uh, Rona, in this work, he makes an honor to one of the goddess of the sweet waters. In one of our tours, I've mentioned you the name of the goddess of the sweet waters from our Yoruba Afro-Brazilian religion's ancestry. Does any of you remember the name of the goddess of the sweet waters? Yes, tiny shells. These shells, they are very symbolic for African culture. They are now used uh, as also in the past, as jewelry, to make beautiful jewelry and ornate, like creating earrings or as an artwork such as these that Rona made. And they were actually Orisha, yes, the Orisha. Who, who would like to remember the Orish, Orisha name of the goddess of the sweet waters? So these shells that you see here, they used it in the past. Yemanja is the goddess of the salt waters and the sea, the mermaid. Thank you, Sheila, for taking your guess. It starts with O. Her name is Oshun. These shells of high value. They were used by African people, different African people in the past as currency to exchange goods. And now they are valuable because many people are using them to make art, such as this valuable piece, or to make jewelry as, as well, bracelets, necklaces, and earrings. Now I want to show you from a distance, this is representing a mirror of Oshun, because Oshun was very proud of her beauty. Olá, Josevaldo, tudo bom? 
de onde que você está falando, de onde que você está assistindo esse tour. So this piece from Rona, he is representing Oshun. Que bom. The goddess of the sweet waters with the teardrops of our lady. Da Itália. Tchau, tchau. Grazie por estar così. Qui. Tchau, bello. In this piece is representing a mirror because she was very proud of her beauty and she was always looking her reflections on the sweet waters of the waterfalls, Oshun, Mada Oshun. And she was seeing her beauty with a mirror and taking care of her beauty. There are many tales around Oshun. And Hona artist, you can find him on Instagram. He is from the Afro-Brazilian religion of the Candomblé. The Mukabe Museum. Now, Ubuntu. What does the meaning, what is Ubuntu meaning? Ubuntu means, is a Bantu word, and the name is given to the linguistic cultural universe. Are part of this universe, everyone, we are all together, and we are, one of us is because the other is. So I am because we are. Ah, sim, sim. Vero. Così, mas, but you can come back and follow, follow me to other tours as well. Don't worry. Just keep following and I'll be sharing little by little when I do the museum tours. I always, even if it's the same museum, I always show something different and complementary so that it will be always news. Where are you from, Josevaldo, in Brazil? So look at this carranca. Do you know what carranca is? The carrancas, they are used in the front of, they were used in the front of ships and boats crossing the São Francisco River in the interior of Brazil. And they will use it as a totem on the front of the ships. How do you call the, the, the front of the ships? To expel the bad spirits. That was a big tradition of carrancas. Now, in the Mukab Museum of History and Culture, Uh, thank you, Josevaldo. Yes, please feel free to look at these uh, different buttons in the app and find uh, whatever you would like to see. So they have a shop here. Oi, oi, tudo bom? They have a shop with different arts and crafts. Oi, oi. Eu tô, hoje eu estou mais na exposição. Eu, outro dia eu mostrei aqui, depois eu volto aqui também. Obrigada, viu? Uh, no, no, I'm not in Salvador. I'm in Rio de Janeiro. Estou no Rio de Janeiro. And showing a little bit of the art and history of the Afro-Brazilian culture here. Now look at this beautiful uh, patio. This was one of the first schools of Brazil. So Dom Pedro II, uh, in the 1870s, after the law of the free womb, Many of the people who were born from uh, enslaved African women or the, or the descents, they were, they were going to be free. But that law was um, ambiguous because they were only free after 21 years old. And while before that, they, these kids, they could not be really free. They were tutored under the... The, the, the mother's uh, master, or the ones who believed they were masters and owners of other people's soul. 
So then in, from 1870s on, Emperor Dom Pedro II noticed that the majority of the population of Brazil, yes, I am Carioca, Satan, the majority of the population of Brazil was black. And because of slavery, we became very uh, backwards into education. So that's why he decided to found many schools in order to give education for the black kids who were uh, uh, being born free. So here is the work of artist Valdomiro de Deus, these paintings. Ah, cool, José Valdo. From Rio, do Rio de Janeiro. And I'd like to share this work of art from Anastasia. Anastasia Livre, Anastasia Free. This is a work of artist Yuri Cruz. José Valdo, do you know about uh, Escrava Anastasia? Now we are creating a revolutionary movement in art that we want that in the past and in the future, it changes the, uh, the freeing Anastasia. Anastasia is believed that she was a queen in Africa and many people from Africa were queens and kings and princes and princes because that was a strategy of the colonizers to kidnap their leaders in order to scatter them throughout the colonies and let their people without leadership. So Anastasia, she was known since the end of the 1700s by her power of speech and leadership. So she was, uh, she was uh, tortured, being forced to use a mask so she could not speak. When I was a child, my grandmother showed me what we call a santinho or this uh, I don't know why it jumped out. 